I thought it was just a regular boy. He was he just dressed like an Indian every day, but it wasn't, you know. And, and uh, he would never come in my house, you know. By the time I was five, and I couldn't figure out how I would come in my house. I didn't know about spirits, but I knew there was sometimes I would see this old man in my house, which I thought was weird. And one day that old man, he was another spirit. He was mean. He pushed me down the steps. But that's just me and my world. But, yeah, uh, some people don't cross over. I have a question over. for you. May mm-hmm. I ask a question? Yeah. Um, my question is, how do you know that it's somebody who passed on and not a familiar spirit? What do you mean? I don't know what you're trying to say there with a familiar spirit. Familiar spirit. Okay. Um, a familiar spirit is a spirit that uh, could resemble an individual but it's really a demon spirit. Oh, I've come across many a mimickers. We I call them mimickers. Yeah, oh yeah, believe me. I um but no, I've I have evicted what I call pure evil incarnate out of houses. I've seen what looks like the Jeepers Screepers man face to face with him, he knocked me right off my feet. Uh, I've seen another one had a big head like a basketball but had spikes coming out of it. Now, I mean pure just pure evil stuff I've seen evicted out of these houses. And a lot of these, they, they do. They mimic other uh, people's family members. They, member, uh, they mimic other spirits. But I have a, I don't know if it's my guys or what it is, but when those things are around me, I know ASAP. They, the, the more evil they are, the more sicker I get immediately. There's no gray area with that. And those, I, yeah, they do mimic. And, and I have little kid spirits, especially little girl ones, red flags go up with me right away because that's what real evil likes to mimic. Absolutely. Well, thank you, James, for your view. Yep, and that's my world. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you lost for words, Brenda? I know I am right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now, I will say James is well known in the paranormal out there as a medium and a ghost hunter and all that stuff. So he has his views and all that, just like you have yours and I have mine. Now, this book, where is it available at? It is available on on Amazon or um, actually you can order it from any bookstore. Okay. And you, or you can also go to my website, brendajmedley.com. Okay, you want to give that website again? Yes, it's Brenda J, like Jack, Medley, M E D L E Y dot com. And or you can go to Amazon. Great. And on your website, what all does it cover? Uh, in terms of the book. Well, okay, in the books, does it, do you give anything else that, you know, people would want to, you know, go to and read and all that stuff? Uh, it's basically, on the website, it's basically about the kinds of ministries um, that I do. Okay. Now, how long have you been mm-hmm. a, a minister, ordained minister? Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see. I started... I guess in long time now, 1989. In 1989, well, actually 1990, um, I used to preach on the street for 10 years to drug addicts. And um, I, um, from there, I, I started um, doing outreach ministries evangelism. Now, you know, I have a church, but I also do evangelism. I recently came back from uh, Uganda, Africa, uh, doing a crusade there. And uh, and if you want to talk about spirits, whoa, (laughs) Uh, demonic spirits and demon possession. Uh, Seen a lot of that and had the opportunity to uh, get people delivered. I guess some people would call it exorcism. Um, that's also real. A lot of people think it's not, but it really is. Uh, so um, it's been, uh, I, I really enjoy helping people. And that is important that we have people like you to do 
do what you did. I want to commend you for going and preaching to, you know, drug addicts on the street because uh, there is a major problem with that worldwide and especially in our country. And they need yeah. help and they need to realize that God still loves them, that people still love them. And I think with that support, it will help some of those people get them off the street. Yes, I believe that. And I've seen it. I've seen it. I remember uh, during the Vietnam era and a lot of the guys came back as, you know, junkies. Um, And some of them were able to uh, get clean and others were not. And it was just so sad. I I saw after that how uh, so many people uh, begin to use um, drugs and not so much prior to the Vietnam War. Well, I know that uh, the, 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 the Vietnam War, there was a lot of people went over there because they had to. They had no choice. Yeah. It was either they got that yeah. or they went to prison at that time. So right. if they were either drafted or towards the end, you know, it was a volunteer or they were trying to go volunteer. But, you know, there was a lot of people over there. It, you had to do a lot of things. It really messed with your mind. Oh, really? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. that if they got wounded, they were given drugs and they were given drugs and they actually got hooked on the drugs, you know, be, while they were, you know, being, uh, you know, being, what do you call it, put back together. Or mm-hmm. th- they got over there and they found the drugs are so easy to get that they, they wanted to escape reality. And when they yeah. came back, they were treated not so good. The, it, 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 the Vietnam true. troops that came back were treated really bad compared to our, our troops in the last couple of wars we have had since then. Th- they weren't treated like, you know, the Vietnam uh, troops were. And I think that have affected a lot of them. And a lot of them, it, it, this, this changed their whole life and they're still going through it. I know because I'm one of them. Yeah, yeah. My brother, too. I had a brother who um, who was in the Vietnam War, and he came back a different person, you know. And I really believe that, um, oh, my God, I was actually afraid of him because in the middle of the night, it would be, halt, who goes there? And I don't remember if he said a gook or a geek or something like that. And I tried to convince him that I was his sister. But you know what changed his, his life? Um, now he, he too is, he's a bishop of a church in uh, Myrtle Beach. Um, but what changed his life, he told me one night that he saw demons coming through the window. And he said that he began to pray and he asked God to save him. And he said that it changed his life. And I saw the change. Honestly, I didn't believe the change at first. And I just kept waiting (laughs) for him to turn back the way he was. But he never did. And it's been many, many years now. And he never did. So that's that's what changed him. Well, Brenda, our time is up. I want everybody to go out and check Amazon or they can order it from their uh, bookstore, their favorite bookstore. Uh, The newest book is Visitations to Heaven and Talking with Angels. You know what? I really prefer myself if people order it from the bookstores because, you know, bookstores are right now are being hurt yeah. by the big corporations on the oh, yeah. Internet. You're so right. support your local bookstore. Yes. Well, you got one minute left. Uh, Brenda, is there something you want to uh, share out with that one minute? There is one thing I'd like to share, and that is I want to um I guess encourage everybody to know that um, there is a heaven and they have the opportunity to get there. Um, And um, the end is not the end. You know, a lot of times we think there's no hope. It's the end, but it's not necessarily the end. God always has the last say. 
So thank you so much uh, for the opportunity of being on the station. I've enjoyed the interview and talking with you, and um, God bless. Well, thank you. And you're not just on one station. You're on 22 radio stations, plus everywhere on the Internet. So, you know, all I can say, well, I want to thank you for being a guest. And, you know, have a great week. Bye-bye. Thank you. You too. Okay. You take care. So anyway, when we come back, we got the last half an hour. We're going to be talking about, well, whatever we decide to talk about when we come back. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio. Uh, Check out our website at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. I kind of revamped it. I'm going to actually, after the show tonight, I'm going to work on a little bit more because Whitney sent me some stuff to put up on the website. He's going to be on next month. And, uh, you know, he is one great person. He had a implant by aliens implanted into his ear. And if you ever listened to Art Bell, uh, if you ever read the book, The Superstorm and all that stuff, it was written by Whitney and Art Bell. I tell you what, I am glad he's coming back on the show. So everybody, we'll catch you after the break. Bagger was a biker, and I drove his motorcycle very fast. Drove a big chop hot with a gang color jacket, and I ran down citizens for laughs. He had an old lady named Petula, who packed an automatic 45 gun. They had just come up from California, where they'd shot six cops for fun. Jake thought it was the best there was, was down the interstate he saw. Till the day he tangled with the county sheriff, who they all called 104. On a Thursday evening And Jake, he was feeling kind of mean Cause he'd just run out of his favorite drug You know, the one called Amphetamine So we started up to Petula And he said, say, baby, let's split There's a little gas station on down the road That might be fun to hit So they drove up to the station And they both jumped off of Jake's ride They were up to derision at Jake's decision As they both on to the inside Attendant, he was an old man, and you know he didn't think it very funny. When Petula pulled out that great big gun, said, "Honey, give me all your money." Well, the old man opened up the cash drawer, and Jake grabbed money and ran. With Petula out the door, through the big chop pile that was parked on the center kickstand. Then they headed out for the four lane, and they thought it was lots of fun. With Jake on his hog, with Petula the dog, with the automatic 45 gun. He thought it was the best there was Was down the interstate he saw Till the day he tangled with the county sheriff Who they all call 104 Please check out the Night Dreams Talk Radio website at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. Also, if you want to keep our show free of advertising, just hit the donate button. Give a buck or two. Remember, all prior shows are always free to listen to. We at Night Dreams Talk Radio thank you for your support. You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network. From our compound to you worldwide. With your host, Gary Anderson. That is me. Well, we're down to the last half an hour. I tell you what, I am kind of nervous right now with all those volcanoes going off. There has been so many in the last couple of weeks. And it's scary because, you know, is it because the earth is going through changes or is this a normal cycle? But it seems like, you know, it's kind of speeded up with these volcanoes even going off. You know, we had that one in New Zealand, which everybody on that island perished. Thank God in the Philippines, nobody got hurt. Well, they got hurt, but nobody perished. Thank God on that. But anyway, James, we're back. Yes, I know. And yeah, 
you know, within the last week, the uh, earthquakes have really went up all around the country, especially here in the United States.